Here joined by NBA Hall of Famer, NBA champion, Gary Payton. GP is going to be one of the judges for the 2024 AT&T Slam Dunk Competition. G Gary, before we even get to this year's, you've been sitting courtside for a lot of these dunk contests. You were there when Sean Kemp, your teammate, was doing it. Is there any particular dunk contest that just strikes out to you, that, that you remember that's the most memorable for you? You know what? I think we were here in, in, in the Bay Area and in, 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 um, in Oakland when Vince Carter he put on the show, man. You know what I'm saying? The dunks that he was doing, man, up in here, man, we was in ooh and ah, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, it, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot of them, but that one is, I think, the biggest one. And then you got to understand the Jordan era, man, when they was going at it, you know, Spud Webb, when he did it. But the most one, I, I would have to say Vince Carter in, in Oakland. Yeah, I mean, that's your hometown. It was a little unexpected. It was almost like a bomb went off. You know, just that. Can you imagine social media, Gary? Ooh. If we'd have seen Vince Carter doing that, those dunks Ooh. back then. Vince, let me tell you, man. It, that was crazy, man, if we'd have had social media then. Think how popular we would have been. You know what I'm saying? How we would have been on that, on that, man. But we didn't. You know, we had these beepers and these and these brick phones, man. You know what I'm saying? And then we had to stop at, at the pay phone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Quarters and dimes and nickels in, man. But we didn't have all that, man. But if we would have had social media back in the day, man, I think it would have been crazy and bananas, man. I, but I think we appreciate that, though, because it made us become who we were, man. You know what I'm saying? Old school dudes, man, we we look, we appreciate not having that during the time. Absolutely. And now and I thought about this, G, because of the Joel Embiid injury that kind of opened up the MVP. And I think you finished third. The highest you finished was third in 98, right behind Carl Malone and Mike. Mm -hmm. Where do you see the MVP race so far this year? Because Embiid is now pretty much going to be out of it. Well, you know what? It, it, it's a lot of players, but you know, that, that that boy down there at Denver, man, it, it, just unreal, man. You know what I'm saying? What he's been doing and how he's been playing. I mean, Luca has been doing a great job, too, in Dallas, man, all his scoring. But if you're going to put an MVP, an MVP to me is how does you make your team better? What do you do to, to, to get all your teammates better? And are you a leader? And, that, and, the era, and them three – that kid down there does it all. You know what I'm saying? He puts up a triple-double. He gets you wins. He makes everybody better around him by his passing. He comes to play every night. That mm -hmm. is a big deal for me. He's a superstar, but he plays every night. You know what I'm saying? Even if he gets hurt, he tries to play. And I think that is the big key for me. And what he's doing down there and how they're doing it, they struggle for a little bit. But now they're getting a little bit back, back into the place. But I think he he's the one that called, I think, is an MVP. Yeah, it, it seems like he's going to be the guy that sort of leaps to the front of the line by default, unless Giannis mm -hmm. or Shea or somebody else comes and has, right. you know, a great, a great last 30 games. But, G, you talked about all the scoring in this league. You are a, you're a scorer, but you are a defensive player. You could use that arm bar on the perimeter. They can't do that anymore. So how would you, Gary Payton, let me put Gary Payton, 27 years old, in his prime, in today's game with today's rules, could you still defend at a high level or would it just look different? Well, Vince, yeah, I would, I would defend at a high level. Let, let, let us take an example of how my, my son defends. See, he has adjusted to the game, you know what I'm saying, by ripping you, blocking shots, and doing other stuff. You know, I wouldn't have been able to do 94 feet because I want to turn people, I want to be physical. But what I would have done is I would have talked to the referees. Look here, man. This is how I play. This is how I go. Let me do what I got to do, man. If I don't over overdo it, let me play this way. And then I would have been ripping at the ball more, doing that type of stuff. It would have been fouls. It would have been hard for a minute. But I think I would have got the referees to understand. That's why I loved our referee crew when I was playing. We had a lot of old school referees, you know, like you, all of them. They, you know, uh, Danny Crawford, they, Hugh Holland, Crawford, yeah, those guys, Joey, all of them. Yeah, they let us play because if we went to them and told them, they would referee the game a little different. They'll be like, like in a in a championship in '96, they let me and Jordan play, 
And that's what it was. They didn't give Jordan all the fouls. They didn't give me all the fouls. They, they, you know, they let me play him. They let me go back at him. See, that's what you would have to do. And I think I would adjust. I would just adjust and then I'll just make it a habit because I'll be everywhere. I'll be going just like what John Stockton do. Get off the ball. Go get a steal. Do that type of stuff. So I think it would have been hard for the first beginning, but I would have I I learned how to adjust to it. I think I would have been talking to the referees and making them understand this is how I play. You can't take my game away from me. And you could defend on every part of the floor. So with right. all the switching, you could guard a big, you could guard a wing, you, you could play, you know, 94 feet literally from all points. So I don't think you would have had a huge problem there. G, I don't know if you've seen this today, but there's a story that came out in out of uh, L.A. that there was a possibility of LeBron James going to the Golden State Warriors, or at least it was broached by, you know, by the Warriors management. And they asked if, if LeBron wanted to go and LeBron said, no, I want to stay in L.A. As a Bay Area guy, how do you think that would have how do you think that would have hit you? Because you played with Carl Malone, you played with uh Kobe, you played with Shaq towards the end of your career at a different spot. Could you see Steph Curry and Draymond Green and LeBron James on the same team? Or, or is that the competitor and you just it just it sits different? It sits different with me. You know what I'm saying? That teaming up stuff and all that crap. You you know, Rich. Rich is, is both of the green and, and and LeBron's agent. So, you know, they setting that up. You know what I'm saying? But you, you got to understand, during my era, I wasn't friends with everybody. I, I wasn't friends with none of them. You know what I'm saying? If I see Carl Malone or John or, or, or uh, Matt, Matt, uh, Michael, or Pip and all them on the streets, it was happening. You know what I'm saying? We'll keep it pushing. You know what I'm saying? And then I tell them, man, look here, man. We can talk later on, man. But right now, I'm against you right now. I'm not trying to be your friend or doing that. You got to understand there are more friends now in this NBA to doing that. They're sitting in their, in, their, in their houses now with six TVs in one room. When I went to my son's crib, he done got a, a PlayStation room, you know, with 80 TVs in there, and then he got headphones on. He talking to all of them in different cities. You know what I'm saying? They playing against each other. I'm like, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? I'm not doing that. And then you seeing. At, at the end of the game, they taking off their jerseys, man, and posting them, man, and all that. Man, I ain't doing all that, man. Ball boy, go get that, that jersey from behind them, man. If my son won't, he tell him to sign it and send it to me. I ain't doing all that. It, it just don't fit well with me, but this era is different. Mm -hmm. They are partners. They are friends. They, they, they wives are friends. We can't take nothing away from that. And we got to look at it. These are our kids. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. are, we're parents, you know what I'm saying? So it's a little different than the way we grew up. You know what I'm saying? So I don't have nothing to get, uh, buy it, but go to state would have had to give up everybody. Mm -hmm. So you only would have been playing with him and probably uh, Curry. You yeah, know a few other guys, yeah, literally. They give up their whole team. It wasn't yep. going to be, you know, Draymond and, 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 and Wiggins and, and LeBron. They would have been only LeBron and Curry. And then they would yeah. have to bring in somebody else. They would have to throw people in. So I don't think that would have happened. LeBron is not going to win. L.A. is his city right now, his town. Kobe is really Kobe city. But LeBron is taking over now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I would, that would have been, you know, that would I don't think that would have never happened. It would have been probably a suggestion. LeBron did what he was he was supposed to. Say, I'm staying where I'm at. He's been traveling too many times. Been to Cleveland. You know, he's been to Miami. Went back to Cleveland. You know what I'm saying? This is his last stop, man. Let him, let yeah. him, he done took over LA. Yeah, you're right. Now, G, before we go, because, you know, you are the, a judge for the dunk contest. And, G, you seem like a tough judge. You're not going to just be giving out 10s. So what is, what is your bar? What is going to be your bar for Mac McClung and Toppin and Jalen Brown and these guys? What is the bar for you for to get a 10 out of you? Let me, let me, let me tell you something, Vince. That, that is it. I'm an old school. They're going to be mad because, to me, you can't dunk the ball 66 times, man, and think that I'm going to give you a 10 after you done tried it 66 times. First of all, man, I think that you should have a plan. Do a basic nice dunk. Get yourself in the championship and then try to save your incredible one for the end. You know what I'm saying? You have to be creative for me to do that. I don't care how high you jump. All that stuff. You got to be creative. You got to do something that I have never seen to be, oh, ah, 
but you ain't going to be able to, to do it six times and seven times and then say, okay, I'll try to make it now and then do something else and say, I'm going to give you a 10. I'm not doing that. That's just not what it's going to be about. I want these fans to have a good time and say, oh, that was an incredible dunk. If you make an incredible dunk, then I'm going to give you something. And it's got to be, it's got to be a, a difficult, a creative of difficulty to do it. You know what I'm saying? So I just say, man, get into the finals. Do basic dunks. Do some dunks that looks good. Do something that's going to be creative. But at the end, give me something that you say, hey, I won this. I get a 50 for this. And that's what I'm going to be. I'm going to be that, that way. You know what I'm saying? I'm not just going to be like, oh, okay, because he out here, he trying it. He did it six times. Let's give him a 48. No, we're not doing that. Let's just try to get, keep this stuff competitive and keep it the right way. They got their work cut out for them. Because yes, Gary ain't getting hey, 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 nothing I, I, I act just like the same on the court, man. I'm going to act just like off the court. I'm not going to give you nothing, man. Earn it, man. We, we all need to earn everything we do.